Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the workshop on machine learning, the beginning. I'm your host, Shaira Shajuti Oishi, and with me, we have our guest speaker for tonight, Abu Shah Ahmed, recording who is in progress. Currently, an electronic engineer at IQ Intelligentist working in Germany. And we are also super proud to mention that he has been an alumnus of the department of EEC MISD. Now, if I may give a brief introduction about him, Abu Shah Ahmed Sar has done it all in his post graduation life. He has developed an embedded systems prototype to measure the high speed current while working as an electronic developer. He has designed a general purpose automatic test equipment to measure the uh, to perform production acceptance tests based on the aerospace equipment as a test system engineer. He also did exploratory data analysis of depth droplets of rainbow pattern with Fortran and MATLAB as a student research assistant. And perhaps the most interesting one is he designed a Python-based machine learning model for detecting the epileptic seizures with an astonishingly high level of accuracy of over 98%. While working as a master's candidate at the Institute of Theoretical and Engineer, uh, Electrical Engineering um, at, and Microelectronics at the University of Bremen. Now I'd like to give the floor to Shah Ahmed Bhaiya. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Oishi for introducing me. Um, I believe that uh, it is going to be a very fruitful conversation today. Bangladeshi kotha bolbo jee to amna shabe ekhane Bangladeshi achhe ki aasha kori bepatta shadhin bhabe dekha hobe. To amar bepare Oishi onik kichhu bol bolu chhe arki. To ami ashule just a beginner in uh, research based career. Ami shamne July theke kath shuru korbo university thi kani. Shekhan ami student theke masters in that level student theke. Artificial intelligence or embedded system ni hoy to kicho amake course korate hobe plus ami shekhane ar ki ekta doctorate korbo etchara ami previously machine learning related kichu kaaj korechi kichu shikhechi amar ashole khub bhalo lagche je amar ranger university ebong aro onek university ke hoyto oneke achen jader ke ami joto tuku shikhechi ar ki ta share korte pacchi to ami e karone jara ekhane ajke join korechen ami chesta korbo amar joto tuku shobho amar pokkho theke machine learning related ekta नलेज बेसिक आईडिया देर एवं चेष्टा करब जो जर ना कि फ्यूचारे कोकम इनक्री थे से बेपारे तक जतटुक सम्भव हेल्पफुल इनफरमेशन दी आज के सेशन ट शुरू कर एक प्रेजेंटेशन दिए अपने एक छोट प्रेजेंटेशन करा बाड़िए एगिए चले जा प्रेजेंटेशने Uh, Oishi, can you please confirm me that uh, you can see the presentation? Yes, uh, your screen is visible. Yeah, you can see the presentation, right? Uh, not yet, Bhaiya. No presentation yet. Uh, one moment, please. Jibha, now I can watch. That's great. <clears throat> भैयाबाउट first i want to discuss about the topic that uh, we are going to cover today firstly we will discuss about what is machine learning what are the sub fields of machine learning what are the types of machine learning the common algorithms of machine learning that we are using then some data organization technique because it's very important for machine learning and finally i want to share a very simple example with scikit learn so The first thing is what is machine learning. So, machine learning is uh, something like uh, suppose in every of your house there is a smart device. You have a mobile. You have a computer. Like you, the computer or the smart device don't have a brain to understand or distinguish between things. Um, I want to take a help of uh, a stuffed toy. 
that is a dog. I think his, his name is Sky. And then I want to take another example of a cat. The cat is Miss Lily. So what happens when a child who does not know about cat and dog, she tried to differentiate between a cat and a dog. She tried to find that a dog has a very big eye and a cat has a small eye. Cat has a very small ear and the dog has a very big ear compared to the cat. These are some of the differences that a child do, does when he does not know about what is cat and what is dog. Thank you, Miss Lily. You can go. Then the child asks his parent, what is this? Then the parent tells that one is a cat and another is a dog. And because you have a brain, you can very easily understand next time when you see a cat and dog and you can differentiate between them. A machine has no brain, but machine can also learn something new. This is one of the aspects of machine learning. A machine needs data to understand about objects. He can understand that this is a fruit and this is a vegetable. This is a cat and this is a dog. The way how we teach a machine about these techniques to differentiate between two things or three things or many other things is basically the machine learning. The features of machine learning is we have to teach the computer to learn about new things, update their already validated or information in their memory, and we have to provide the knowledge to observe and interact with the world. That is the basic prospect of machine learning. So in summary, machine learning is the science where we teach a computer or a smart device about things, about the level of the things and how they can update their knowledge. It is kind of a subset of artificial intelligence and the machine learning process is kind of continuous learning. There are many subfields of machine learning. Some are supervised learning, some are unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning, deep learning, and semi-supervised learning. In our practical world, basically we go for the supervised, unsupervised, re and reinforcement learning. So supervised learning is something like, suppose when you are a child, you have been given some information about the dog, and then your parents or neighbors or your friends told that if you find something, an object like that, this is called dog. That means you are telling, you are told by your parents or someone that if the thing looks like that, it is a dog. You are giving the information to him. You are provided information about the data, supervised. That's why it is called supervised learning. If you have not been given any information, like suppose, you have a robot in your house and the robot does not know anything. The robot asks you, is it an apple? You say, yes, that is an apple. So next time when the robot sees something like an apple, he asks you again and then you tell him, yes, you are right. Or no, you are not right, this is an orange. That means you are not giving at the present time the information about the object. That is why it is called as unsupervised learning. Then we go for the reinforcement learning. Reinforcement, reinforcement learning is something like, suppose the robot does not know anything, but when he tells something correctly, after getting some previous knowledge, then you give him an award. It's, it's something like, um, I believe that you all know about Netflix, so when you watch Netflix, when you watch the movies in Netflix, the Netflix then knows that this movie is something that you like. So you are recommended in future for similar type movies. Well, the, 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 the amount of time you watch a movie is the award for the Netflix machine learning algorithm. And later, based on the award amount, he can recommend you a better movie of your choice. So in summary, when the data have been given to the machine, 
is known, then it is called supervised learning. When we have no prediction about the things that of the, of the data that is provided to the machine, it's called unsupervised. And reinforcement learning is sometimes you are asked to do something, you do it correctly, you get a reward. Based on the reward future, you can predict better. Deep learning basically works with artificial neural networks. It is a lot of data you have to give for the deep learning, but probably uh, for this conference, it is out of scope to discuss. And the same is for voice learning. Some of the data has a level that this data corresponds to this thing, and this data, we don't have any we don't have any information. It's a mix of supervised and unsupervised learning. Now, types of machine learning. Clustering is a type of machine learning. It's something like, uh, suppose you have some data and the data has two parts, x-axis and in the y-axis. And the data points after you put in x-axis and y-axis, you will find there are three clusters you can form. As you can see in the slide, there is data type one, data type two, and data type three. Whenever you get a new data, you check whether it falls under the category of data type one, data type two, or the data type three. That is how it predict an outcome. That is basically the purpose of machine learning, that you give some information to the machine, machine and machine needs to tell you that if in a future he gets some data, what type of data it is. The next one is regression. I, I believe that probably in engineering, you have already read about some mathematical formula about regression. So in regression, what happens that when you place the data in X axis and Y axis, then you can also draw a line of regression in there. So machine learning algorithm sometimes use the regression technique. So based on some of the data that you have given to the algorithm, it draws a regression line. And then when a new data comes with the information about the x-axis and y-axis coordinate from the regression line, it can tell you that what should be the output. So, the next one is classification. I believe that uh, which is the most important and basically I have worked mostly on the classification thing. In machine learning, there are two things. One is the input and second is the output. We all want to find out an output based on the input. The input can be told as a training data and the output is the data level. That means when you have the training data and you can map it to the x-axis and y-axis, the machine learning algorithm helps you what is the prediction of the data that you have given. Like previously, I have told you, the dog and cat had some differences of their, in their attributes. They have difference in their sizes, their eye color, their uh, height, many other things. So this information is the input and the output is, it's a dog. In future, when you get a new animal in front of you, you can tell that it is a dog or it is a cat based on the input, the features that you have already taught the machine learning algorithm. That is what is happening in classification. In classification, the prediction output is binary, zero or one. It can also have three or four classes, but it is the output is always discrete. It's not like regression. Regression will calculate the input, check the input, and give you an output, which is regression based output. It can be anything. But for the classification algorithm, it will be discrete output, like it can be one. The output, it can be two, it can be three, or it can be four, or any other things, but not something like uh, the, the machine learning algorithm will calculate and give you a number. It's not something like classification. Generally, the classification that I have worked on, it was one or zero. I have got some inputs, 
the input was called as training data. The training data has many types of features. I have checked the features and then I tell based on the features, I can say that the output is one or the output is zero. Probably the people who are going to work in future on machine learning algorithm, this will be very vital for them to understand that the data level is what we are looking for always. We need to find out that based on the input, what type of output we are going to have. This is the difference between the classification and clustering. Classification, we, after mapping the data in x-axis and y-axis, we get, we de design and hyperplan. You can see a line in between the blue dots and the triangles, which are green. This hyperplan is the dividation between the two types of data sets. When there is a new data you receive, we check whether it is falls under the category of the blue dots or in the category of the green triangle. Based on that, we can say, hey, it falls under the blue triangle, or sorry, the blue dot, so it is the data of a children. If it falls, in the category of the green triangle, we say, ah, okay. So based on the data, we can say that this is the adult data. This is the data of an adult. And clustering, you will find that it is the same data, but we have created some zones. So any new data which will fall in zone blue or the zone green, we can easily say that it is adult or a children's data. And that's the difference between the classification and recreation. In classification, a very clear line you can see, it is not linear, it's a nonlinear line, which will indicate the difference between the two data. And in recreation, it's always a straight line because it's a linear recreation. And in the future, based on this line, we will get an output prediction. There are many types of algorithms in machine learning. It's like kernel-based method. You can have ensemble method, tree-based method, gradient mustering method, regression analysis method. But in our practical life, I mean, the, the thing that I'm currently working on is basically the mix of kernel-based method and regression analysis. And I believe that these two are the most important machine learning algorithm. Currently, uh, some for the advanced work, we also use gradient, gradient boosting technology. Sometimes we use ensemble methods. There are also something like K-nearest neighbor algorithm. But today I want to talk mostly about the kernel-based kernel method, that uh, how we use it to uh, define or predict an output after given the training data to an algorithm. But before that, I want to just tell you again how the machine learning algorithms work. First, you have to find out a problem. You may have many types of data in your hand and someone tell you, hey, I gave you a lot of data. I need to find something from this data. I need to say whether this data belongs to type one or the data belongs to type two. Your first job is to collect the raw data. You take all the data with yourself. Then the next part is organizing the data. You can have a lot of data which are not usable. It is very important for you first to organize the data in a, in a very good manner so that this structured data can be used in the machine learning algorithm. After you organize the data, then you have to find which type of features you are going to take. Suppose you are trying to find out what is a fruit and what is a vegetable. They both have a very common characteristic. Both can be eaten. So, if you have the data like 
vegetables can be eaten, fruits can be eaten, you have this data, it is actually not useful because both has the common data. You have to find out the difference between them. That's why it is very important that you distinguish between useful and not useful data. And when you distinguish the usefulness of the data and select the data which you need to use, this is the part we call select features. This is very important. When you put the data to the machine learning algorithm, he tries to find out the differences between the data. And in supervised algorithm, he already has a training data. He will have maybe five to six features of data. And he knows that based on the five or six features, the output is supervised to him as one or zero or fruits or vegetables. From these five to six features, it is very important that the data gives a very nice introduction to the object that you are trying to distinguish. The next part is select a machine learning model. In my previous slide, I have shown you there are many types of algorithm. There are kernel-based methods, there are gradient misting methods, there are ensemble methods. You have to choose which type of algorithm will be the best for you to do. Like, suppose you have millions of data and you are trying to use these millions of data to get uh, output which, is, which cannot be classified, which cannot be told like one or zero. Suppose you are working at a cancer hospital. For the cancer research data, you need to find out that what is stage of cancer the patient is having. Maybe his condition is very bad, maybe it's not very bad. And this condition can be defined from 1% to 100%. In that case, you need to use the regression method. From the regression method, you can easily say that the patient is 65.8% bad condition, his liver or his heart or some of the things which are affected by the cancer is affected in that percentage. You can very easily say that. That's why it is not a classification. But if you are asked that you, you need to find out if a patient has diabetic or not diabetic, in that case, you need the classification algorithm, which will say you one, which is yes, the patient has diabetic at zero. That means the patient has no diabetic. And the features can be like the measure of blood sugar, maybe the pressure, maybe the patient's age, patient's weight, and many other things. This will be the training data. Maybe you have given the data of 10 patients. These 10 patients has 10 types of 10, 10 features. And of course, all the patients need to have the same number of features. Like patient A has five features. Patient B should have also five features. And these features is like an array. I will show you in the later example. And this input data or the training data, you are going to fit into your machine learning algorithm. The data which is fit to the machine learning algorithm is the training data. You will say in the training data that based on the five features of patient A, he is diabetic. That means it is one. After giving him hundreds, thousands, or millions of patients' data to the machine learning algorithm, what you are going to do? You will implement the model. It's like in the programming, you have given all the data needed to your preferred machine learning model and the parameters that is needed, which is kind of like advanced talk, but yeah, we are not going to go on the parameters thing, but yeah, it is something like you select the model, you give the data training data, and then implement the model. You just press enter. Data is given. The method is given. The computer is now going to work on that. And then somehow one of your neighbor comes to you. He says, I understand that you have a very good database where 
you have taken 1000 patients diabetics data and put it in the model so the model knows based on the data which data corresponds to diabetic patient and which data corresponded to non diabetic patients your neighbor tells that i have the same data five features i want to give you this data please tell me if i am diabetic or not diabetic you take this data you give to the model hey you are already learned you have already learned which data corresponded to diabetic and which to non diabetic i have this new data for you can you please check if my neighbor is diabetic or non diabetic this part is called evaluate when you give this data which is now the testing data the machine learning algorithm will give you an answer one or zero and then if it is one you have to tell your neighbor sorry you have diabetic if it comes zero then you can tell you don't have diabetic let's eat some steps so that is actually the basic of the classification with supervised machine learning algorithm the first free part where we are trying to find out the problem collect the raw data and organizing the data is part of data science many of the people who are working with machine learning algorithm give the most importance to the data science technique is really very important that the data you are going to give to your machine learning algorithm the data should be significant the data should be very clear and the data should not have lots of noises what is the data noise sometimes it can happen suppose for a diabetic patient if the sugar is above 6 we say ah you have some problem probably but sometime it can happen that after eating a lot of sweet a non diabetic patient suddenly after after eating those those sweets he get a sugar level of 7 but of course it will go down maybe in one or two hours to the level 5 where we can say he has no diabetic this is a noise yeah this guy has eaten a lot of sweets and immediately we are checking the sugar level it will be spike there will be any spike in his sugar level so uh this cannot be considered as a very important data because if we put this in this type of data which was suddenly seven the sugar level the machine learning algorithm will do some mistakes because the other features of this guy is just like a normal gun data science is the technique is kind of like a civil engineering of data where we const- where we construct a data very clearly and we organize it in a way so the machine learning algorithm will takes it give a very good prediction to collect the data from a raw data select the features and find out the important information from the raw data is called data mining then you have to do the organize the data by filtering the noises sometimes you have to rename the data you have to give an identification like it is a numerical data or a categorical data these are the things you do in the data science techniques it is not a very specialized programming thing or something like that no probably you are already doing it in your engineering courses whenever you are taking some lectures from your teacher on the classes some of the points probably you think that very important to learn very important for the exam you write it with a highlighted marker this is called data mining and this highlighted data when after coming back to house you put it in another blank page and write it correctly that these are the highlighted data that i have found out and these are the important things which you will read just one day before the exam this is called organizing the data and 
these are the important attributes or features of the class lecture that you have taken. The more organized the training data is, better prediction outcome there will be. This is just the most important thing. I, I, I just wanted to discuss a little bit about uh, the thesis that I have done. Uh, in my thesis, I have to predict from a data of epileptic seizure patients that if the patient is going to have a problem based on his brain signal data. The data was really totally full of noises and a lot of things. I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to have a very good prediction that based on this data, I can say that, yeah, this patient is going to have a very soon, a very bad seizure attack. And the doc if the doctors cannot take and step immediately, the patient will die. But the data that I have received from some previous patient, this training data was not good at all. I have to do a lot of filtering. I have used the butter oat filter. I have used IIR filter, infinite impulse response filter, and many other things to organize the data before I put it in the machine learning algorithm. And when I was satisfied that my data is very good structure and very well organized, only then I found the accuracy of 98%. The similar research was done in MIT. I have taken the same training data what MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology in America was using. They were having an accuracy of 96.4%. My accuracy up to 3000 data was actually 100% and more than that, it was 98. So my accuracy was a little bit better. better. It's not because I have chosen a very good machine learning algorithm. They were using support vector machine algorithm, which is a kernel based method. I have also used the same algorithm, but my accuracy was better because I have worked six months only to organize the data correctly. I have to work a lot of hours every day to see the techniques, how I can structure the data in a better way. After compiling all this information in my brain and in my computer, then I felt that, okay, I believe now I can very easily see that when the epileptic seizure patients can have problem and when they cannot have problem. I have drawn many types of curves. There are heat curves, there are bar plot, there are hysteresis plot. After doing all them, I understood that yes, my plots are also showing the same distinguishment that I have predicted after structuring the data. Then I got satisfied and I got a better prediction result. So I will request all of you who are going to work on machine learning algorithm in the future, please try to learn more about the data organization. Try to figure out how you can plot your data. Maybe you can use Python programming language or there is another programming language which is R, very good for data science. Just try to see if the data you are going to work with can be very well organized and can be seen in a very good way in the plots. These data science techniques, I'm sure you can very easily find in the internet, or you can see in the YouTube how people organize the data, how people draw the plots, very easy. I'm sure that most of you has already worked on MATLAB. MATLAB is a very good way to work with data numbers, and you can try to do a lot of GNU plots using MATLAB. So before approaching the machine learning algorithm, this is something that you really can be hungry about to learn. Now, I am sure that probably many of you are still having some confusion how you can work with machine learning algorithm. 
for all of you guys, this is a very simple example I want to present. Just please be with me and be very, very attentive to understand the program, the problem. I believe after that, at least 75% of your confusion on machine learning will be just gone. Now, in this example, you can see I have some training data. For each row represents an array and this array of data consists of feature one, feature two, feature three, feature four. There are total four rows. That means there are total four arrays. You can consider this row as a product. That means product one has the value of feature one as one, feature two as 1.5, feature three as 1.2, and feature four is 2.1. If product one is having these four features, we can say that the data level, I mean the classification of this product is one. We can say that. We already learned about it and this can be now put into the machine learning algorithm that dear machine, if you get a data which has the values like there, 1, 1 1.5, 1.2, and 2.1, it is called binary classified as 1. Second product, which is 1.7, 1 1.9, 1 1.4, and 1.75 can also be classified as 1. The third and the fourth product the values of the features little bigger. Mostly it is more than five. And when it goes more than five, then it is classified as zero. Same goes for the product four, like product three. So product one and product two is classified as one, type one, and product three and for the four is classified as type zero. I give this information to the machine learning algorithm using programming language. Then I ask the machine learning algorithm, hey, machine, now I have a new product. And this new product is six, Four, 8.9 and 11. Can you please tell me what type of product it is? Is it one or zero? I'm sure that all of you can easily say that it's a type zero product because the value of the features in here are bigger like product three and product four. And how does it work in programming? This session, this machine learning session is very small or a very small time, but I can still show you in scikit-learn how it works. And it is really very, very easy, trust me. I want to just show you how I have done it in scikit-learn framework. But before I show you the scikit-learn framework, I want to just tell you a little bit about scikit-learn. I have already talked with you about machine learning, machine learning algorithms, but how can you implement them? You can use Python programming language. Scikit-learn is kind of like a framework which consists of many, many libraries. What is library? If maybe somehow you guys don't know what is library in a programming, I just tell you a little bit about it very little bit. When the programming is given a command, you give a command to the programming, please print this, please do this, do this. Why programming give you a correct output? Because the programming language already has a library. 
has its source very where he understands that if someone write down print he has to give an output what is inside the print command that means like a child when a child is taught when he is asked come go he knows that when he when he is or she is asked come he has to come to the person who is asking him when he is told go he just has to run away because this information is in his head this is the library psychic learn also has a library a lot of information that if i type something in python then it takes the reference of the libraries that i have already introduced in the programming and he understand ah okay mr shadhamet is telling me to do this thing so i already know that what he writes what does that mean so i will just do it. so i just wanted to share this small uh program that i have done based on this example how it is done in psychic learn very easy and very interesting so i will stop sharing this presentation and just a minute uh miss oishi can you please confirm me you can see the screen uh not yet bhaiya i can only see your video ji bhaiya can i share okay so <clears throat> this is a jupiter notebook it is kind of like an ide is like a, a if you want to do python programming you can use jupiter notebook it's is very comfortable for me it's very comfortable sometimes i also use pytorch or spider but i believe that for machine learning algorithms uh probably if i want to use python for machine learning jupiter notebook is a very good choice so you can see that i have given at the first line from sql learn which is scikit learn import svm which is support vector model i am repeating support vector model is an algorithm of machine learning which scikit learn already knows i ask scikit learn please use that library for the future programming then in the next line i have x equal to the array of the data that means these are the product 1 product 2 product 3 and product 4 i have given the features using commas 1 1.5 1.2 and 2.1 these are my training data that means x is here my training data y is the classification the first product has the value of classified prediction of 1 then the second product has 1 the third which are very big third third and fourth product features 5 5.5 8 5 5.9 7 which has a classified value of 0 the next line i wrote clf it is just a random variable arbitrary variable it's a just classifier you can also write something else you can write mist equal to svm.svc SVM is the library that in the first line we called. So inside the SVM, there is a function called SVC. It is called support vector classification. This function will very easily classify when you give it a test data. but it also needs to know what are the training data that means you have to fit the training data in the classification function which i have done in the next line you can see that the classifier 
which I have used as SVC is fitted with X and Y, where X is the training data and Y is the label, whether it is one or zero. That, that is the label you already understand, right? And after I do that, then I give him a very new data, which you can see in the next line, print classifier CLF dot predict. What you he has to predict? He has to predict product five. That is a new product, which has a value one, one, 1.2 and two. And it predicts it is a one which is absolutely correct. As I told you before, product one and product two has the feature value very low, one, 1.5, 1.7, and the data level for that product one was one. So when I am giving him a test data where the feature values are also very small, it can very easily predict it is one. And in the next line, I have given him an, another test product, which has a value five, six, seven, and eight. These are some big values, and it can very easily predict it is zero. Now I'm going to go back to my presentation. So this is uh, the, the machine learning presentation that I wanted to give you today. Probably you will feel that, okay, this is something maybe not so important. It will just predict something, some values after I give him the data. It's actually not like that. I have given you a very small example. Suppose in the biomedical industry, when they are trying to figure out a new medicine to something, what they do? They have millions, billions of data. They have gigabyte, terabyte of data. For a human mind, this is very easy to classify a new product, a test data, by only using maybe four or three training data, or maybe 100, even it is very easy. But for a computer, it will be easier if it gets millions, trillions of data, which a human brain cannot do. That's why machine learning is very important. It's not only data. Sometimes maybe you have been given some images and you have to tell from the images that this image shows one person. What is the name of that person? It, is, it can be done with artificial neural network or the art ANN, ANN machine learning algorithm, which we call artificial neural network machine learning very easily. From the pictures, it will try to find out the special characteristics. The picture can be divided in maybe 10,000 pixels, something like that, 1,000 pixels. And from every pixel, the machine will try to gather the information that these 1,024 parts of the pictures, what information is there? Then it will try to match with and know the pictures of that person. And it will say that, ah, it is matching with the record of that person. So we can say that this person is named as Mr. Shah Ahmed, Ms. Shaira Oishi, or Mr. Pratik. That's why machine learning is very important in the real world. So um, I have found that uh, you have some good queries about machine learning. I can maybe tell you a little bit about it. So the first thing is how to start and which resources that you have asked. For me, I have not read any book personally. I did not need to. When I was given the research project to me to do some works on machine learning algorithm and embedded system, I have spent most of my time trying to read 
many important articles, journals on machine learning algorithms. But the most important part was I have tried myself in Python programming language using scikit-learn framework, how to do it. I created my, my own problems, my own uh, mathematical problems, and then, then I tried to feed it in the Python programming language, and then I tried to find out the answer. I did many mistakes, but I can say now that uh, if I get now a very new problem on machine learning algorithm, I believe from my practical approach to understand machine learning, it will not be very difficult to solve a new problem. Which fields can use machine learning? Can be used anywhere. You can use it in NASA. You can use in any biopharma company. Whichever industry has data and whichever industry wants to predict what they can do with this data can use machine learning. I already told about that which programming language it's Python or R. You can also do very good machine learning algorithm techniques in MATLAB. Which framework or library? I have used scikit-learn framework. I'm not quite sure about the programming language R, uh, but for me, scikit-learn was having a vast resource on machine learning algorithms. And they also has a website. You can just go to Google and just type scikit-learn, you can go to their website and we'll see a lot of user tutorial in there. My learning was mostly from scikit-learn because this is the framework that I have used in all the programming, like all the machine learning problems that I have solved up until now. What is the career opportunity? This is a very important part. Many of you will think that I'm an electrical engineer and what I understood that machine learning is mostly a mathematical problem. Of course, I, I, I totally agree with you that yes, it is mathematics. Whether you do some image processing, whether you do natural language processing, that's NLP, everything is mathematics. But for an engineer, how it is important is when, or an, basically mostly for the electrical and the computer engineers, when you are going to use the machine learning algorithm in practical life, then you really need it to understand because machine learning is only an algorithm, but you need to put this algorithm in a device. For me, I have used field programmable gate array that is called FPGA. I have used the machine learning algorithm. I know the mathematical formula of the model that I have used. And then I programmed the mathematical formula using hardware description language. It is called VHDL. I program it with VHDL and put it in FPGA. FPGA is a, it's a logic device. There are, this is full of transistors. You can do programming in there. And what's the, what's the benefit? When I put the algorithm in FPGA, then there is the option of giving the test data to the FPGA device. And when the test data was received by FPGA, it can easily classify that whether the test data is type one of type zero for a financial organization, probably they will use regression-based machine learning algorithm. They need to compute a lot of data in a very small time. They first create the machine learning algorithm with regression technique and put it in their computer or FPGA or ASIC and from there, they can get the results. Ah, okay, so if I have the financial results like that for the last 10 years, this will be the result for 2022, probably, if I have this kind of features. For biomedical organizations, they will check 
millions of cancer patients data put this data in machine learning algorithm which is already in a device this device will say that okay based on this data if you give me a new data of a patient i can say that this patient is in a very critical condition because his blood sugar level or something else some features of a cancer patients are very bad he is in acute condition so yeah you need to do this or maybe some medicine they want to create they can use the effect of the medicine after putting it in a patient they will analyze the features of the patient after taking the medicine put it in the machine learning algorithm which is in a device and the device will give some images that if you are using that type of medicine you will get the patient's condition like that so whenever you are trying to create a smart carrier in future you probably will need artificial intelligence machine learning is just a subset of artificial intelligence and you need to put your machine learning algorithm in a device and present it to the world that's why i have chosen machine learning algorithm as my career path because the world is all about data now was it a right path for me i don't know but when i see the whole world all the researchers working near me in the universities i feel everyone is talking about data data and data based on this data i can say that based on the data i will tell that and how easily they can say that because they have deep learning they have artificial intelligence they have machine learning algorithm they know about it they know how to implement it and you have seen a lot of science fiction movies where you find that the robots are talking like a human how they do that the robots when he is asked of a question or when he observe a scenario from the machine learning algorithm he already knows what he has to do what he has to talk because he has already got a lot of training data he summarizes it and then tell i have to save the guy i have to catch the criminal i have to drive the car because this is what my algorithm is telling me to do you have to choose whether it is the right path for you or not so this is the whole presentation before i finish i want to tell everyone thank you very much for your patience i have tried my best to make it simple and understandable for all of you and if there is any future inquiries i'll be very happy to know about it the host of the meeting i want to thank her all the person who has arranged the meeting i want to thank for this beautiful event and i'm very happy to share my knowledge with you thank you again thank you so much bhaiya i personally found your presentation very very informative because we do study about this regression analysis in our statistics course and butterworth filter and noise but we often fail to realize how these things are connected to machine learning or for that matter uh, larger problem solving cases in real world scenarios so thank you so much for your uh, uh, beautiful presentation and uh, thank you so much for talking about how we can get started on machine learning and if we fancy this career path So uh since you have already filtered out the question answer we have collected through Google form uh I would like to make a small announcement for all the participants here is that uh, those who are uh, interested in uh, receiving the certification of the partic participation for this tonight's event we would like to cordially request you to fill up the feedback form that is given to you through our Zoom chat right now and uh, please answer some simple questions that is uh from this event from his presentation to receive the certificate and please give us some feedback about tonight's event so that we can improve for our future 
in case you have missed it and there is no need to worry for that uh, the event page will also have the links of the recording of this session and the feedback form as well so in case uh, of any internet hiccups from the participants part they can also watch the recording and finish the feedback form so that they can ultimately achieve the certificate so now i would like to invite hosam uh, professor hosama hader sir if he is here assalamu alaikum sir Yes, I am here. Now I would like to invite uh, Professor Hosam Haider, sir, who is the counselor of IEEE MIS student branch, to say a few words. Thank you very much, Oshin, for giving me the floor. At first, I would like to thank Saad for giving a very nice presentation for the beginners, especially for the junior students uh, of IEEE student branch. Not is not only there. I, I think the most of the students are. from amst but some students are from outside amst as well i heard from the voice that some of our participating from the abroad as well so thank you very much sir for giving a nice presentation it is very informative i think i found it and uh, for the beginner and the, uh, to inspire them to join in this discipline i think this is a good start up and uh, try to uh, communicate with them all all the time Uh, keep in touch with them to inspire them uh, to uh, do for the uh, research work so that they can go for abroad for higher study and other things and also to inspire them to always connected with the ieee so that the ieee is the largest professional platform uh, of the technical uh, discipline as well so i would like to thanks once again for giving you valuable time and those who have arranged this program especially the uh, person those who are involved for uh, arranging the uh, this two, uh, session especially the chair and the oishi i don't know the exactly i forgot the their uh, their appointment as well because the last um, meeting they have given me the form the which appointment they are belongs to i uh, still i could not recollect them but even then thanks to everyone those who have participated this is the first event they were talking about the their shortcomings of lot of resource persons i told them there are lot of my students are all over the globe they are doing the phd and lot of involved uh, lot of research work with uh, new in innovation so i told them communicate with the MIST student, those who are abroad, maybe select them as a resource person, so you can hold this kind of event every week. Even every week, it is possible. There are a lot of MIST students all over the spreading all over the globe. So now onward, you try to at least monthly once, or maybe uh, within the fifteen days, you can hold one session of this one, so that you can achieve the best student branch award. MIST already won once uh, this uh, student best student branch award from the IEEE Bangladesh section. That time I forgot the name. The chair was Shoji or something like this. He is now in Australia doing his higher study. So thank you everyone for participating in this session. Thank you very much. Especially thanks to Saad. Please try to communicate with us all the time. Not it is not that student will uh, knock you. it is other way reverse it should be so that your juniors will re uh, real uh, recognize you and also remember you thank you very much thank you so much sir for that wonderful wonderful concluding speech uh, dear participants we really hope that you found our event helpful on your journey to becoming a pro at machine learning and we really appreciate the time you have chose to spend with us tonight please do let us know what more you would like to see in future from us and do not forget to answer the questions in the feedback form that is provided to you in the zoom chat that will help you to earn your e certificates of the participation for tonight's event in case you miss out you can still watch the recording from our event page the recording and the feedback form will be available there as well thank you so much abu shad ahmed bhaiya and professor haider sir for taking some time out of their busy lives and educate us on the basics of machine learning and thanks for helping us to orient ourselves with the, by learning in the right path thank you so much everyone good night and stay safe